you need to squeeze a little bit more performance out of your discs in Azure just occasionally? Let's find out how with the new bursting disc capability in Azure. In this video, we're going to explore the new disc bursting capability that's available in Azure. Now, ordinarily, we think about a managed disk, and that's what this applies to. It's managed disk, not unmanaged storage, just a page blob. So think about a managed disk. So we have this managed disk, and that managed disk behind the scenes is sitting in a page blob, it's sitting in a storage account that's abstracted away from us. We don't have to worry about storage account limits anymore. That managed disk has a number of attributes. We can think about things like capacity, how much stuff can I put in it? It has IOPS, how many operations I can perform per second. And then it has a throughput. And the throughput, you can think about, well, how big is that pipe? How much data can I push through? And that's really a combination of the IOPS, the operations I'm performing, and the size of that operation. So if I was doing 100 operations, and it was four kilobytes each operation, that's 400 kilobytes of throughput. So a disk has those dimensions to it, the amount of data I can store in it, the number of individual operations I can perform, and then the total throughput possible. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect that managed disk typically to a virtual machine. Now I can also use them with things like containers for consistent um, storage, but for now I'm gonna focus on a virtual machine. Now a virtual machine also has dimensions related to storage. And this is important because it's a combination of those limits that's gonna see well, what exactly is the operations I can perform, what is the throughput. And on a VM, I can think about kind of a number of disks that I can attach, and then I have an IOPS limit and a throughput limit. So if I have more IOPS and throughput on the storage than the VM supports, then the VM is going to be the bottleneck. That's the number of operations throughput I'll see. If the VM supports more than storage attached, well, then the storage will become the bottleneck. And the key is you pick the VM size, the number of disks and the performance of the disk to meet your requirement. Now, ordinarily on a managed disk, the capacity, the IOPS and the throughput are set. I get a certain amount of IOPS, a certain amount of throughput, um, often based on the capacity of the disk. The bigger the disk, the more IOPS, the more throughput. Ultra disks change this, I can pivot those individually. But I get this kind of flat amount of IOPS, a flat amount of throughput, whether I use it or not. The idea of the bursting capability is actually not new to Azure. VMs actually did it first with the B-series. So the B-series virtual machine had a certain percentage of the CPU available, let's say 10%. If I used less than that 10%, well, I would start to bank credit of CPU. Then I could burst and use that credit I've built up when I had some surge in CPU requirement, maybe a logon storm, for example. Well, now we're getting the same thing with the disks. We're getting the same thing for IOPS, the same thing for throughput. So you could think, or well, maybe ordinarily, I have an IOPS of 120, just picking a number. Maybe ordinarily I get a throughput of maybe five megabytes per second. Again, just kind of making those numbers up. The idea of this is, if I'm using less than those number of IOPS, if I'm using less than that throughput, I actually start to bank credit. So you can kind of think about, hey, if there's this chart, I'll just focus on IOPS for now. If my steady state is 120, that's what I'm provisioned, what I'm allowed to do for that disk. But now let's say my actual usage, we'll do that in green, my usage is, well, it's down here. I mean, it wavers a little bit, but I'm way below what my provisioned is. Maybe this is 60. So what's happening, all that IOPS that I'm not using, this kind of delta, I actually get credit. So I'm starting to get this 
rising credit line. Just like the cell phone plan. Hey, I get a certain number of minutes. If I don't use the minutes, they roll over to the next month and I can do a lot of chatting the next month. So now the idea of the bursting is, hey, something happens on my disk. I need a surge in IOPS, a surge in throughput. If I bank that credit, what I can actually now do is surge up way above the 120, maybe to three and a half thousand IOPS. I can surge and get these peaks of IOPS. Now, I'm gonna start consuming my credit when I do that. So I've built up credit. I'm now surging past my normal amount, but I can sustain that for a decent period of time. At the moment, it's about 30 minutes. So that's what disk bursting is all about. Hey, I have a provisioned amount of IOPS and throughput. If I'm not using that amount, I'll actually start to bank credit. And then I can use that credit when I have this surge, when I need to go past my normal 120 IOPS or my five megabytes per second, whatever those numbers actually are, until I've used up my credit, until I've maybe hit that 30 minutes. So that's the goal of bursting. Uh, let's actually go ahead and take a look at this in action. Here in my demo environment, I'm gonna focus on two virtual machines, these bottom two. You can see one is in West US, and one is in West Central US. And notice the size. The first one is a DS1, the second is a DS2. And the only reason I've gone to a DS2 for the second one is because that's where we currently have the disk bursting. And the DS1 actually has a lower IOPS limit than what I can burst to, so I wouldn't be able to show the bursting. If we quickly look at the article that talks about the new bursting, we can actually see here, it talks about the types of managed disks that support the bursting, the premium SSD. And you can see the normal provisioned IOPS per disk, i.e. 120 for a lot of the sizes, then it starts to increase as the disk gets bigger. And also the provisioned bandwidth per disk, the throughput, 25 megabytes per second. And then as the disk gets bigger, past 32 gigabytes, it starts to increase. Then it talks about what I can burst to. And here you can see, well, they can all burst to 3,500 IOPS, and they can also burst to 175 megabytes per second. And the max duration, assuming I've built up that credit, is 30 minutes. So that's the disk, that's their limits. The virtual machines also have their own limits. So here my DS1, well, it supports four data disks. And then if I actually look at its performance, well, it can do 3,200 IOPS and 48 megabytes per second. So that 32 is below the 3,500 burst I could do with a disk, which is why my West Central US VM, I increased to a D2 because that can support 6,400 IOPS. It can also support eight data disks instead of four, and a higher throughput. So you can see the limits of the VM really do scale along with the CPU, the memory, and everything else. I'm going to use the Iometer tool. And what I've configured this for is just a four kilobyte, 50% read, 50% write, random IO. And I'm targeting a data disk I've attached. Now, both the data disks are the same. If we look at my West US virtual machine, and I look at my disks, you can see, well, I have one data disk that's 32 gigabytes. If I was to look at my other virtual machine, my West Central virtual machine, well, it too has a 32 gigabyte disk. So they're the same managed disk. I think that's a P4. Now, as we know, based on the VM size, even that one, which is what I'm on right now, the D1, it should be able to achieve about 3,200 IOPS, but a regular P4 without bursting can only hit 120 IOPS. So let's see what happens when we run this test against the data disk. So I'm gonna hit start, and then we can see I'm hitting 121, see a bit clearer over here, 121, 122, pretty much those limits. Also my throughput, that's only 0.5 megabytes per second. And that's really because I'm only doing a four kilobyte 
operation each time. So 120 times four, yep, it's roughly half a megabyte. That's where you can see the combination of the operation size and the number of operations. That's gonna be my throughput. So I can see I'm getting 120, which is what we would expect. So now I'm connecting to the other virtual machine. Now I'm doing exactly the same configuration. I'm doing the same four kilobyte aligned, 50% read, 50% write, 100% randomized. I'm gonna target my data disk that's attached and let's hit go. Save the file. And let's actually change that refresh to every second. You can see I'm hitting 28, 29, so close to 3000. It's going up. Oop, 31. But I'm getting a lot more IOPS, way more than the 120. And again, that's a factor of well, hey, I'm getting that bursting. Now, once I've used up all my credits, we would see this drop. If we actually go and look at our throughput, we're at 10 megabytes per second, and that's based on that IO size. Number of operations and the actual operation itself is at 4K, so I'm throttling at the IOPS. If I was to stop this, and what we'll actually do this time is we can actually change the operation size just so we can see we can burst through the throughput barrier. So I look at the access specification, we'll get rid of the 4K and let's make it bigger. We'll go for a 64K. We'll use that one and we'll start it. So now you can see my throughput is way higher. I'm up to now 85 megabytes per second and really that is what I'm now getting throttled at. So up to 90 megabytes per second. And the reason I'm now stopping at this number, I'm way short of the IOPS, but remember the virtual machine. So I'm hitting about 94 megabytes per second. That D2, which is what I'm running, has a maximum throughput of 96 megabytes per second. So this can actually help see, and there's a combination here. I've got the limits of the disk, then the limits of the virtual machine itself. If I made this virtual machine even bigger, I could actually see the full 170 megabytes per second. That is possible when I have this bursting. But that's really it. That's kind of walking through and showcasing, hey, I can burst the IOPS, I can burst the throughput with this new bursting capability. So I hope you found that useful. Um, go and give this stuff a try. At the time of recording, it's really only West Central US that you can use this in, but this will expand as it hits kind of general availability. Thank you for watching. Please uh, give me a like and subscribe. <laughs>